okay, Matt. Uh, mine was the very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> Hello, my name is Eric Carley. Many of you know me as the author of children's books, like uh, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? The Grouchy Ladybug, and of course, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Still others know me as a singer of songs. But some of you, if you're of a certain age, may know of my history as a fucking suck master of, dare I say, <laughs> mythic proportions. <laughs> I could make, as the Rolling Stones used to say about brown sugar, a dead man come. <laughs> or an 80-year-old woman in a diabetic coma. <laughs> oh, Doris, you hellcat. <laughs> There was a time I made my living at it, paid in everything from gold to secrets to service the wealthy and powerful. I loved my job and I was good at it because I worked at it from when I was only 16. And I still practice now at the age of 86. I can get a massive erection on demand. Even now, serve as an aircraft carrier of Navy men and women and still have enough spunk, yunt, and fill a g to fuck a doorknob off the hinges. <laughs> Fill it with hot paste and suck it all out with my mouth like a toothless camel starving in the desert for palm tree sap. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. I'm here to talk about my children's books. Listen to me prattle on and on like I'm writing the story of O or Alphonse, the anal blacksmith of Galway Bay. <laughs> You're probably wondering why this memoir has become so, well, blue. Well, that's because, you see, all of my children's books are based on the sexual exploits of my youth. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See is quite obviously the four years I spent learning how to properly use scat or human feces in the sexual servicing of deviants who are willing to pay for that kind of thing. Suffice it to say that eventually I would have them covered in my and their dark, rancid ass leavings, and I would always end the session by smearing it under their face and eyes. <laughs> then I would laugh and bellow, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? <laughs> Nothing but shit. <laughs> but you're not here for those. No, you'd like to hear the story of how I came up with the very hungry caterpillar. Isn't that right? Aren't you? It, it was and is my most popular work. <laughs> For a reason. It was inspired by my oral period. Fifteen years where I studied under Catherine the Hole, a whore of certain renown in the Barbary Coast. Ah, oh, she could suck a butthole inside out. Or a penis outside in. She'd learn by removing the eyes from out-of-hand Navy men in her dockside bar. That's one way to taste semen. <laughs> they were left blind. She put me on my way first inside an opium den where I blew every traveling salesman and rail yard coolie in sight. Oh, coolie back then meant oriental or a Chinaman. Hey, I'm 86 and white. Back then, it didn't mean anything. And besides, I suck their cocks. I did it for two years and never ate anything but jizz. Like, oh, is, is that the word? Jizz? Anyway, it's smoother than jazz. Never liked it. You're probably wondering when it was that the caterpillar made himself sick, as you know from the stories, or how he eventually turned into a butterfly. Well, I made myself sick, blowing, on purpose, the most syphilitic hobo in Tramp Town. His penis looked like a sock filled with crap and left to dry, then covered again in shit. When he blew his load down my throat, he screamed like he was being burned, because he was. He also had the clap. Tasted like orange juice mixed with piss and battery acid. Boy, was I sick. So that's how the uh, sick caterpillar idea came for the story. And how did I become a butterfly? Well, it's, it's happening now, you see. And any time I get to tell this story to total strangers. You should have seen the faces on the children and teachers at Irvington Elementary School last week. <laughs> Little ruined fuckers. Thank you. Suck a dick. 